time for a little history lesson now. Closing textile mills and losing textile jobs, what comes to mind? Well, the head of South Carolina's Springs textile family says she never saw it coming, at least not that quickly. The foreign competition that hurt so many textile towns so deeply. But here's something else they didn't see coming. Foreign companies now bring textile mills and jobs back to South Carolina. Jeff Sonier has more from Lancaster Fort Mill and Rock Hill this week in our special series, Textile Towns Remade in the Carolinas. Yeah, we're actually in old downtown Rock Hill tonight, the historic district, for a concert across the street at the post office and courthouse. The Charlotte Symphony recalling the days when Rock Hill was a textile town too. They're celebrating Rock Hill's textile history with a weave of music and mill sound. These symphony musicians performing alongside vintage films of old shuttle looms and spindles, the kind you see in these rare cotton mill photos from the Springs Family Archives, which are also on display here in Rock Hill. You know, one of the things I really do like about Rock Hill from a historic standpoint... Outside on the downtown sidewalks, historian Wade Ferry points out the stores, still standing, where Rock Hill mill workers did their shopping. Beyond that, you had the phenomenal Freedoms Department Store, which was really as nice as any department store in the East Coast of the United States. And the houses, not standing, where the mill workers lived, all of these buildings, you know, were just simply uh, destroyed. You know, they brought in bulldozers and one day they're there and the next day they're not. Mill houses lined both sides of every road like boxcars on a track. We work in his mill. We live in his houses. And when we die, we are buried in his cemetery. And the old mills, well, they're sort of like tombstones. You find them today in nearly every textile town. In huge printing plants like this one at Rock Hill. And those Monuments to textile history and the heartbreak of all those lost textile jobs. They had no other economic means of making a living and mills are closing. The mill owners are simply saying, you know, you work for me if it's my way or the highway. Let the mills go by their way, tear them down, whatever we wanted to do. But while there is hope in Rock Hill that these mills once laid to rest are rising again, See them wherever you drive in the textile belt. In many of South Carolina's best known textile towns, the local mills are gone for good. Or this one in Lancaster, largest cotton mill ever constructed under a single roof. Here, plentiful raw materials, abundance of power, and skilled craftsmanship combine to build an ever growing industry. That was Lancaster in the good old days, when Springs Mills had thousands of textile workers in its then modern Lancaster County factories. New plants like this bleachery at Grace, modern as tomorrow. When I was a little girl, Fort Mill, I would say at least 90% of the people worked in one of the two cotton mills that were here. Now there are no cotton mills. Ann Springs Close is 92 years old. And for five generations from their homestead here in Fort Mill, her family's been the first family of South Carolina textiles. From after World War II up until mid-80s were the golden years. Uh, and new machinery, and it was an exciting time to be in the business. What made Springs different than the other mills? My father, he always said this money came from the I can remember him saying, the sweat of the brow, of those people working in the mill, and it's going back in this community. What has turned out to be our biggest legacy is, is the Greenway. Uh, my father and my husband got to build mills, and my poor daughter ended up closing them. She had the rough part of the deal, because during the late 80s and 90s, it, you could see the change coming, but no one had any idea that it would come as rapidly and as completely as it did. How hard was that? It was kind of rough. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it was, 
the, the numbers were there, it just wasn't working. And then they started going overseas and then the competition got so that uh, you couldn't compete. Kyrgyz, which locates in Hangzhou, Zhejiang province. So many companies were leaving and they were going to China. So when those jobs left, Really Jamie Gilbert's been to China. Lancaster County's economic development director has toured these new high-tech cotton mills there, like the ones that took so many jobs away from Lancaster and other textile towns. Here introduces world first-class textile machines. The process has become more technical oriented, and so it's a higher level of worker that's needed than what it was 20 years ago. But the newest Chinese textile mill Gilbert's talking about now isn't actually in China. It's the Kier America plant, built by the Chinese here in Lancaster. So this is their U.S. headquarters and their manufacturing center. Right now behind us you have a second building under construction and the project when it was announced four years ago was $218 million in new investment and 500 jobs. 20 years ago, textile companies couldn't get out of the Carolinas fast enough. Right. They were going to China. Now China is coming to us. What's, what's bringing those jobs back? Uh, it's an interesting phenomenon. I think there's a lot of things. Uh, you know, the cost of doing business is going up in China. Labor costs are rising. Shipping costs are going up. The quality of cotton also is far superior in the U.S. and Southeast than what they're able to get closer to their facilities in China. That's a really important consideration to locate in here. Reputation and quality are always the things that Kier treasure the most. When you see this happen and manufacturing coming back and an industry that everybody basically had written off, I think it does say, you know what? Everything's cyclical. So, you know, what's old is new again, and that's what we're seeing. And Lancaster's economic development director says, because of the success of here, here, well, other Chinese firms are also looking at relocating factories and offices in this part of South Carolina. Amy? I learn something new in Jeff's reports every time. Well, up next in our series, you'll discover how one textile town is transforming itself into a destination from downtown dining with cozy coffee shops, popular pubs, and trendy new restaurants, all on its Milltown makeover menu. Hey, Belmont, we'll see you soon here on Carolina Impact. By the way, each of these stories are part of our Living History documentary series, Textile Towns Remade in the Carolinas, coming up in March that you won't want to miss.